Hello there and welcome to this course. This course is less than one hour of video content and it is designed to teach you how to develop and finish programming a Discord bot today. Hello there and welcome to this course introduction. In this course, we are going to develop a Discord bot using the Node.js programming language. And this bot is going to respond to a specific command and we will write functionality to make that happen. So the steps in this course is we're going through the installation of the software, which is Discord, Node.js, Visual Studio Code. And then we are creating a Discord bot in the Discord developer portal. And we are creating a Discord server where we're going to test the bot and get it up and running. And we will get the invitation link to our bot so that the bot can join the Discord server. After the bot has been added to the server, we need to run some npm installation and create some package.json files. And then we will be able to start developing the Discord bot, writing the basic code and progressing into creating a bot that responds to a command. At the end, I will write comments in the code to explain what the code is doing. And I will teach you how to do that and why it is important to write comments. And this course is less than one hour of video content. So it, it is designed that you can complete this course today and develop a disco bot today. My name is Eric Peterson and I'm 25 years old from Sweden. I have many years experience in C sharp, Node.js, JavaScript, full stack web development, web design, and I have some experience in game development and Arduino. Those are basically my core skills and I have developed many different disco bots and I have a few years experience when it comes to teaching online on different platforms. And I do use Node.js a lot when I develop web applications or browser games or disco bots that is basically this course using Node.js to develop a disco bot. This lecture is going to be about the software and programming languages and the editor that we're going to use within this course. So to begin with, well, you need Discord. Because we are going to develop a Discord bot, then you need the Discord software, which is essentially where, well, you have like social gatherings, you write to people, you talk to people, you can have like screen share, you can live stream, you can uh, host events, etc. There's a lot you can do with Discord. And this is kind of a requirement. You need to have Discord because if you're taking this course, I believe that you have a Discord account, just like I have. And you can, you simply just need to download it and create an account. It's super easy, but I will not show you how to do it. Okay. But that's pretty much it about Discord. It is the social software where we communicate. The programming language that you need for this course is Node.js. This is Node.js and it, it is essentially JavaScript used as a server side language. And when you download, select the recommended for most users. Open when done. Sometimes it is a bit slow, so let's see. All right, so let's install Node.js. You have to agree here. Next. That location is fine. Next. Uh, you can press next here. Uh, this thing, uncheck this. It will install things that you don't need. Next, install. And it should be quite easy to install it because it is simply a programming language and you can run a node service on your computer. That is a nice feature. You can easily host your disco bots on your computer if you have Node.js. I already have Node.js installed, so that's why it says like removing files, etc. So it might be taking a little bit longer for me. And Node.js is installed. 
However, you might need to in uh, restart your computer when you have installed Node.js. So after we have installed Visual Studio Code, I want you to restart your computer because I think sometimes you actually need to restart for Node.js to work on your computer. For example, st starting the Node server. Sometimes it just doesn't let you and you have to restart your computer. But Node.js isn't like something you have to start. It is simply something that is on your computer now. And for Visual Studio Code, this is the link. And you can see that you have different downloads here. Mac, Windows, Linux. And download for Windows is what I have. And it is going to be downloaded. In the previous lecture, I supplied you with the links. I will not supply you with the software, but I will send you the links. Okay. Agree. Accept the agreement. And I don't actually want any of these. Install. And it should be quite fast as well, because it is a very lightweight editor. This isn't like Visual Studio where it takes a really long time to actually open up and start up the editor. This opens really fast. And these are the files that we are going to develop within this course. All right, so that is pretty much everything. Now we have Discord, Node.js, Visual Studio Code, and we can begin developing the bot. Hello there and welcome to this lecture. Within this lecture, we need to head over to the Discord developer portal to create a Discord bot. Because we need to create an application that is essentially have going to have details that you can log in with. And I'm going to show you how it works. I've already Google Discord developer portal. And I click this link. Now you need to be logged in. And I am logged in. And I go to applications. If you get stuck or anything, you can see my URL up here and you can simply type it. But here we are. These are my bots that I have created. And we can ignore them because we need to focus on this button up here. New application. Because we want to create a new application. And I would like to call it funny bot. And here you can change the name of your bot if you wish to. And that is something I'm going to do. And I'm going to say responding test bot because that is basically what it is. But you can name your bot any name at all. However, this application is created but it is not a discord bot right now you need to head over to this tab called oauth2 and click this add bot yes do it and now this is a discord bot okay so we have created a discord bot that is basically what it looks like, if you go back to applications, you can see the bot down here. This is the bot that I created. Now, I would like to go to Discord. And I have a server that we are going to use where we are going to test the bot. And you need to create a server, and that is quite easy. I am not going to create one, but I will show you how to create one. If you press this button, Scroll down here, all the servers you're in. You go down here, add a server. You can select whatever you want. These are templates, but we don't really need that. But if you want a template, you can go for it. I want create my own. Is it for you and your friends or a club or community? It is for me and my friends. 
and you can name it anything name name here and then you press create and what happens when you press create is that a server like this is created the difference is that you only have one text channel and one voice channel both are named general i have a bot and a user added to my server but we can ignore them because we don't really need to focus on them once you have your discord server open what we need to do so we need to head over to desktop i'm currently on my desktop and we need to create a folder okay this folder we're going to store the code inside this folder and the project files etc and i would like to call this responding bot okay and what you need to do now you need to open visual studio code and it is going to up open up some random file for me so i need to click open file or actually open folder we have created a folder and my folder is on desktop so i click desktop and the folder is called responding bot select that and now it is open this folder is empty to create a file if you see what is highlighted in blue here if you right click here and select new file you can create a new file and i would like to call my file app.js .js stands for javascript and we are creating a javascript file so that is uh, actually needed it needs to be .js for example your files called text.txt and that is a text file txt the name should be app because uh, when we create a project it is going to have app.js as entry point but you can give it any name at all you can give it like home about bots.js you can give it any name at all but inside this file before we do any installation we need to gather three different things we need to gather the token and invite link for bot okay how do we get these if you head over to your discord develop portal and select your application the bot you have just created we go to o of two if we go to bot here you have token and if i press reset token you see this is my token and i copy that but if i refresh it is no longer shown but i have the token here that is my password and if i regenerate it it is going to be gone so we need to take the new one okay it is essentially like updating your password or changing your password and this thing public bot it is checked so uncheck it when it comes to privilege gateway intents we need to access the message.content and this is going to be changed in about a month so what you need to do you need to uh, you need to check this okay so now we are going to have access to the message.content because that is how the bot is going to act it is going to act on the message.content basically the text the user has written okay save changes what we need to get now is the invite link to our bot that is found at o of 2 we go to url generator The scope is bot, you can just click that, and this opens up bot permissions. 
when you have bot permissions open, fill out the send messages, and suddenly you have an invite link down here. So copy that. And then take this link, paste it, and suddenly we have the responding test bot and we can add it to our server. My server is Eric Peterson server, but your server is going to have a different name. Click continue, send messages, I am human. The bot should be in my server. Is it? Yes, it is. This is the bot that we have created and it is now in my server and you can see this has this icon. It is a bot. But we are not really done. We need to paste the invite link here. And that is pretty much it. We have created a Discord server. We have created a Discord bot. And we have added permissions. We have added gateway intents. And the bot is now in my server. We have invited a bot basically. And in the next lecture, we will continue developing the bot. In this lecture, we are going to do the npm installation. And the npm installation is essentially adding a project.json file and with config data. That is going to be very important. Okay, so to open up, I have highlighted this section in blue. Right click and open in integrated terminal. And here we can use the npm command to install things. But we need to begin with npm init. By writing that, we initialize the product.json. Basically, it's, a, it's actually called package.json and it is a dependency. It has dependencies inside a file. The package name, you can write anything here. Or you can simply leave it blank and press enter. And it is going to select the default value that is inside the parenthesis. The version, you can keep it at the default. Description. A bot that responds to a message. This is what I talked about in the previous lecture about the entry point. Make sure that it says app.js, but if it doesn't, simply write app.js and press enter, and it's going to be set as entry point. The test command, we don't really need any, so press enter. Git repository, I have none, I press enter. Keywords, we don't really need that. Author, write your name or your nickname or your tag name or anything that you want. License, I press enter. Is this okay? And then I press yes and package.json is created. And this looks a bit empty. There's nothing important here that like uh, has dependencies or anything specific. That is something that is going to be added whenever we install discord.js. And we're going to do that immediately. We need to write npm followed by install followed by the name of the module, which is discord.js. And then you can add a dash dash save at the end. It's going to save the, it as dependency and press enter. We wait a couple of seconds. Okay, let's read what it says. Add 24 packages. It said found zero vulner vulnerabilities and we had no error, so that is great. And suddenly, it has added a property called dependencies and added discord.js, this version, as a dependency. 
so now for this project we know even if we remove all of the files we know that this requires disco.js so if you were to remove all the folders and you keep the app.js file and the package.json and you write npm install it is going to automatically look at the dependencies and install them automatically okay now we have discord added in the next lecture we are going to start writing some code and we will get the bot online up and running but it will not be able to respond to messages because that is something we are going to do later on in this course so i will see you in the next lecture and we will start writing some code basically doing programming hello there and welcome to this lecture this lecture is going to be about coding basically programming and to start off creating this bot well what do we need you remember we installed disco.js so we need to access that inside node modules discord.js because discord.js contains functions and methods and apis and like things that we need to create a disco bot uh, it is very complex so it's not something i'm going to cover i'm going to teach you how to use it so create a variable called const you can use the var keyword like var like that or let keyword but this variable we don't want the value to ever be changed during runtime but the name const prevents that from happening because after giving a value to const variable you can never change the value of it it goes to return an error and your application is going to crash basically it won't even start when you save the code and you try to run it that is the purpose to never change the value of this variable and variables need to have meaningful names i'm going to give it a name discord and that is equal to what we have installed and we need to use the require method and this is going to require something and it is automatically going to find that we have discord.js installed so that's what you simply write const discord equal to require discord.js and now we have stored everything about discord.js inside this variable okay so what exactly do we want to have from discord because it is quite large and uh, we don't really want everything we want some specific parts what we need is a client that we can log in so we need to create a new client this variable has to be const as well because when you have declared a client you do not want to change the value of the variable this is like discord it is going to be named client and this what is it going to be equal to well we did store discord inside a variable and we need to access something inside discord so we're going to make use of the discord variable by writing new discord dot client this is going to create a new client And we could simply just write like this client so if you write client we are accessing the bot application basically that is what we are creating and i can add functions for example add listeners fetch skill preview fetch invite there's a lot of things you could do here but we need to access the function called login here you need to paste your password which is this password the token we paste that there 
Now we have all we need to log in the bot. Except for one thing. But let's try to log in the bot and see what the console is going to say. The terminal. So here you need to write node is the command followed by the name of the file which is app.js and if you press enter it tries to run the app.js file and it says client missing intents because we need to add intents to this bot in order to have it up and running because there are certain things that we need to access here we have two links we have gateway intents this is the structure. Intents. This is what we're going to write. Okay. So let's open up the client again. Here. Add the brackets. And write intents. With array brackets afterwards. And then here. These are the intents that we need to add. However, what do we want to add? That is something we need to figure out. If I go back to gateway intents, I go to gateway discord develop portal, the documentation. And here we need to scroll down to gateway intents. list of intents an intent is used to access parts of the properties the objects the events etc so if you would like to access all the guild members for example when a guild member joins the server you need to use the guild members intent what we are going to do is that we are going to write a message a specific command and the bot is going to respond to your message so what intents do we need well we do need to access guilds because that is the discord server in its entirety so guilds intent let's begin with writing guilds let's redo that and simply write guilds that is the first intent, but we're not done yet. Guild members, guild bands, guild emojis, guild integrations. Well, no, none of these have anything to do with messages. Except this one. Guild messages. And this is the event that we need to keep track of. The message create. In order to receive that event, we need to have guild messages. Guild messages. And there's one more that we need if you want to write to the bot in direct messages. And that is direct message. Direct messages. We have the same event here, so they are on, on the same function, like the return function when you listen for an event, it is going to be fired if it is written in the server or in DMs. It's going to be the same code, but you separate them with if statements. Before we end this lecture, let's add direct messages. Here, we add direct messages. Okay, now let's run the code again, node app.js, to see if the bot is going to be online. And you can see it looks like it's frozen, it's just stuck there. Well, if you go to your Discord server, you can see that the bot is online. The bot is up and running, but it cannot really do anything because we 
have nothing. We have nothing here basically. We have simply just created a new client. In this lecture, we will be adding partials, basically enabling partials. And you can see this warning text. Make sure you enable all partials you need for your case. If you miss one, the event does not get emitted. So without partials, the event will not be emitted. And we need to add the, those that have any impact on messages in DM, in server, etc. And we don't really need to look at the list because we can find the list here. If I separate that with a comma and I write partials. And let's move that to a new line. Like that. And if I write quotes, you see we automatically find out which ones exist. These are the partials that exist. And we're going to add message. And we're also going to add channel. Those are required. However, I would suggest to add all of them. Except for... Let's see, I made a mistake there. I would add all of them apart from guild scheduled event. And the last one is going to be reaction. This makes sure that whenever you continue developing the bot, you are going to have all the events emitted because you have the correct intents and you have the correct partials. All right. Now we need to access an event that is going to display a nice message whenever the bot comes online. So if I run the code, you can see we have no message or anything when the bot is actually online, when you start the application. I'm going to press Ctrl C to stop the execution, to stop the server from running. And now I would like to access an event. And how do we do that? Well, we already have defined a client. And this client has events that it is listening on or listening for. If you write client, if you write, if you write client dot on. And it listens for event. And these are some of the events. Emoji create. Yield ban add whenever someone gets banned. We're going to find a message. The message is, I believe, deprecated. It's obsolete. It is not used anymore. A message create is the event we're going to look at in a little bit. The event we are looking for is called ready. This is fired whenever your bot comes online. And then I, I simply write the arrow function and I accidentally remove the parenthesis. Just like that. Now we created an arrow function. I was a bit clumsy there, but this is what the arrow function looks like. And here I would like to display a nice message that the bot is online. The bot is online. Now, if I run the node app.js code and I start the server, it prints the bot is online. That's nice. We now know that the bot is online. But I would like a nicer message to say the name of the bot and adding a message to say this bot is now online. And to access the name of your bot, well, the client is your bot. So the client contains information about the name, tag, etc. The client dot user dot 
tag. Thus, is now on line. What is this going to print? Take a guess. It is going to print name, hashtag, and discriminator, which is the four numbers. By running the code, it says responding test bot is the name, hashtag 1301 is now online. So this bot is now online. All right. In the next lecture, we are going to use the message create event whenever someone writes a message and we will look for a specific command so it doesn't respond to every single message. Hello there and welcome back. Within this lecture, the bot is going to respond to a specific command. So let's get there. Let's do some programming. This is going to be very similar to the ready event, except we are looking for the message create event. And that is easy. You simply write client.on once again, and you write message create. Notice that it is message in a lowercase and create as a capital C. That is because Node.js is case sensitive and this is called camel casing. Okay. This event is going to return a message. That is the object that is returned. And then you add the arrow function. In here. The code inside the code inside this event is only going to be fired whenever a message is sent that the bot can actually read. Basically, if you have a text channel, let's say call admin, and the bot doesn't have access to the channel, the bot is not going to detect the event because no message is created that the bot can read. And it is quite easy to respond to message. You simply write message dot reply. Hi there. And let's start the server by running node app.js. And if I write hello, the bot is going to tag me and say hi there. But notice that it is it keeps spamming. The bot started spamming, so I stopped the server. And the reason for this is quite simple. I write a message. The bot is responding to my message tagging me. But then the bot notice that, notices that a new message is created. So the bot is actually tagging itself writing hi there and this is going to be resulting in an endless loop because for every message sent it is going to reply and once it has replied it's going to see a new message is created and it replies to that new message so it is going to continue like that forever and to stop that from happening we can simply just tell the bot to not reply to bots. So if the user is a bot application, we are not going to write anything. That is easy. You write if message. This message object, the message object, we need to find out what that is. And we have a good documentation for discord.js, that is what we are using. When we create the Discord bot, Discord.js, that is what we installed previously. If I go to this link, Discord.js.org, and I head over to the documentation. This message object is a class, or actually it has a class, and that class is called message. This is the list of classes. 
and the class we're looking for is called message because we would like to find out if the owner or the author of the message is a bot or not and message has a property called author and author is a type of user so we so that is the class user i can scroll up here and click uh, send it scroll down and i click user this is what we get and in the code basically we are here Mes message dot author is this class and this class has a property called bot that is a boolean it returns true or false so by writing message dot author dot bot we access a property that is true or false and this need to be false What this is saying, if the author of the message is a bot, this code is not going to be run. So if you are a normal user, this code is going to be fired and we will reply to that message. Okay. Objects might be a bit tricky, but what we're doing is that we have an object and that object has properties. And the property might have a property in itself, so it can go very deep, this object. And I can print that, console.log, message. Okay. Let's write node.js and start the bot. And I write a message, the bot responds. But it doesn't keep responding like it did previously. That is because we have added this failsafe that we only reply to the user if the user is a normal application. It cannot be a Discord bot. And then the line after that, we did print the message object because I want to show you that this class message contains all the data that we simply looked at. That message contains all the data that we looked at. Which is the message.author.bot. So let's find that. Let's begin. Here starts the object. And you can see that it says message. That is because this object is a message class. And then we have author. So this is message.author. And you can see that the author is of class user. That is the class we looked at. And this is the property that we accessed, bot. And you can see that this is false because I am not a bot. So if it is true, the user is a bot. If it is false, it is not a bot. So it is a regular user. And you can even see my username, Eric Peterson. That is me. But I would like the bot to only reply to a specific command. I don't want the bot to respond to every single message i would like to have like exclamation mark hello and the bot is going to respond and that is quite easy as well inside this if statement i would like to add a second condition that has to be met in order to run this code to add a second condition i write double and Followed by message.content is equal to 
exclamation mark hello now let's do the same thing again with the message object we access something called content that is a property so if you look at data here message.content is this and you can see there's other message that I sent the message content is hey which is essentially this message here okay now let's try and run the code again I restart the bot and I can write anything it doesn't work but if I write hello the bot suddenly says hi there all right well done on creating this bot the bot is basically complete we have done what we were supposed to do create a discord bot that responds to a command that is exclamation mark hello from now on you can continue on developing this bot and do whatever you want and i hope that you learn something new and useful in the next lecture i am going to add comments and teach you about comments but it's going to be a quite short le short lecture because comments aren't really that difficult but we will go through them in the next lecture hello there and welcome to this lecture in this lecture i will teach you about comments in programming specifically for node.js javascript because comments for Node.js and JavaScript are written in the same way and they work exactly the same. And this is the last lecture in this course. Okay, so what is a comment? We have already written comments down up here. The token and the invite link. However, that is a single line comment. And you can have multiple lines comment, but it is not really necessary for this project. Single line comments are okay. A comment is essentially explaining or describing what the code is doing. So, for example, let's create a comment to explain this variable. Basically, this variable is the access to Discord API. That is what this variable is doing inside this program and then I'm going to create another comment and then I will talk short about it this client variable well what's the explanation for this variable well creating a new client from word API with intents and partials when i execute this file and i have the node server up and running these green lines that are comments they are ignored by the compiler so they are only usable for you who are reading this code when it comes to software development in general based off the projects i believe that 60 percent of the importance is the coding the programming part and 40% is writing comments that explains the code. Because trying to understand a program without any comments that guide you and explain what the code is doing, well, you're going to have a headache and you will waste a lot of hours. But with proper written comments, it is much easier to understand what the program is doing. And it's going to save you from headaches and a lot of wasted hours. You can just imagine on a professional level, a large company, a large program, no comments. Well, if some new employees need to figure out what the code is doing to change something, it's going to be very costly for the company. On the other hand, if the program had well written comments, maybe instead of spending, let's say, 100 or 200 hours, you're going to half that easily. That is how powerful comments are. And to further write comments, we can simply just say 
print bot name when ready event is fired. Okay, that is basically what happens because the ready event is going to be fired once and then we print the name of the bot. Message create event reply to user if user is not a bot and writes the hello command. That is basically what it does. It is the message event, message create event, and we reply to a user. And here it simply says login your bot with password slash token. This is a very basic program, so that's why we have basic comments. If the function that were dependent on other functions, etc., it will require more comments to explain further in detail how the program works. But this is the end of this course, and I hope that you learned something new and that you liked this course. And I hope that you also understand how important comments are within programming, even though this was a pretty short lecture. So I would like to say well done for completing this course, and now you have a Discord bot that can answer a command, and you can further develop this bot to do whatever you want.